Imagine being able to write entire emails with just a few keystrokes. Or what about visiting a website or opening a program or a folder on just a simple shortcut key? Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and today I'm introducing the Auto Hotkey Automation Library. You're going to be able to create any type of automation, whether it's running programs, visiting URLs, opening files or folders, or expanding text, and a whole lot more using this incredible library. This one training and template could save you hours a day. I cannot wait, so let's get started. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic, fun, exciting, and life hack training that's gonna save you tons of time. So I can't wait to share it with you. This is the full automation. So whatever you do on the computer, we can automate that now with this incredible auto hotkey automation. And I'm gonna share everything with you. So make sure you do stick with us. Of course, I bring you these trainings each and every Tuesday and Saturday. On Tuesdays, these comprehensive application development. And every single Saturday, I bring you the basic VBA training to make you fantastic with VBA so that you can create these applications and earn a passive income. My goal is to not just teach you Excel, but to make you successful with Excel. So make sure you do get subscribed. Go ahead and click the notification icon bell. If you want this template, of course, just like every week, it is absolutely free. All I do is ask you click the link down below, look for the word download, into your name and email, and I'm gonna get that sent right over to you. I do appreciate your continued support. There are so many fantastic ways to support this channel, and I really do appreciate it, whether it's tips, whether it's purchasing the courses or products that we offer, or some of the incredible, fantastic hacks that I'm sharing with you today, I'm really happy to have you here. In fact, a few months ago, I created this incredible Ultimate Developers VBA library. So whether you're new with VBA or you're an experienced VBA developer, this incredible library contains over 500 macros. In fact, we're up 526 and I'm continually add new. If you wanna be able to develop applications in one tenth the time, go ahead and pick up the Ultimate Developers VBA library. I'm gonna include the link down below so that helps support the channel. All right, so let's get started right away on this auto hotkey. So the idea is relatively simple. With this application, we can create new automations. And what do I mean by automations? So let's create a new simple ones and I'll show you exactly how it is. So let's say I wanna just say a hello, right? And I wanna say, hi, how are you doing? How is everything going with you today? And it's something that I say often enough or I type often enough that I want it automated. So what I'm going to choose is something called a text expansion. It means I want to expand the text. And maybe uh, we'll give it a name, we'll call it hello. And I'll give it a shortcut key. Let's just do HH, something that's not very common, two keystrokes. And I'll just do hi, how are you? I was wondering, if you had time for a quick lunch next week. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. Save and close this. And then inside any application or any website or anywhere you want, uh, here's a Word document. All we need to do is just type in HH and the text is going to automate. Now that's one feature of many features. In this particular application, we can also run programs. So for example, I've got this one where I'm going to be able to launch Microsoft Excel using this shortcut key. Now the pound here is also a shortcut key. So that's the Windows key. The plus is the shift. The exclamation is the alt and the up arrow here, the angle here is the control. So what we can do is we can create shortcuts and run programs. So maybe I wanna run Excel with this shortcut. So that means when I press the Windows and the E key, which I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna press Windows and E. And what that's gonna do is gonna launch a new version of Excel. Oh, I've got the dialog box open, but it launched a new version of Excel. So we see how that worked right away just by pressing certain keystrokes. So we can program those keystrokes very, very easily inside here. So that's our library. So let's go ahead and minimize that. I've got this dialog box open. And also what we can do is we can open URL. So maybe I wanna open my website. I've created an automation for that. If I wanna edit and take a look, 
So I can press here. If we see here, we see Control Shift E will do just that. So if I do Control and Shift and put in the E in the keyboard, it's going to launch my website right away. So we can see that it's very, very easy to automatically and quickly create these shortcuts. Now, this particular library is going to help us organize it. It's going to help us automate it, create them. We can do actually five different types of automation. The text expansion. We can run a program like you just saw. We can open a URL. We can even open a file, any specific file in your computer. And we can also open a folder. So we can do those things automatically. And we can do as many as we want. And this library is going to keep track of everything so we can create new ones. Now, all of this happens with a software called Auto Hotkey. Auto Hotkey is a free software. If you've watched any one of my videos before, you'll notice when I go into VBA or something like that, and you see me type something like this, and I just type a few characters. I'm going to do that again. It was very quick. I F N tab. You see how I automatically, so you've probably seen that before. And I've used auto hotkey to do exactly that. Or maybe I create a sort and I create so many sorts so often I do W S O R T and I hit the tab or enter and it automatically enters the sort. So I use a program called auto hotkey. It's a free software and that's, what's going to do the work behind the scenes. However, I've built this Excel template to work directly with auto hotkey. So you never have to open auto hotkey. It's working in the background. We can create, we can update, we can add, we can do anything we want. So for example, this text expansion, if I were to edit that and it's going to say a H and then let's say I want to change this to next month. All I need to do is just change it, save and close it, and we're done. We go into there, and then instead of this, I just type in HH, and now it's next month. So not only can we add new, we can update existing ones. You can do so much with this tool, even with macros. Of course, it works with macros. So I've got a macro inside here. We can take a look at this BFF. It's used for open a folder. So if I edit that, we're going to see this macro. It's BFF. So whenever I type in BFF browse for folder, it's going to automatically run this macro. As you can imagine inside here, BFF, you get the idea of exactly what's going to happen. I got to close this dialog box first. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll cancel out of that, but we can just go in the module here, BFF. So it works great for coding as well. And you can see the macro simply just types itself. Maybe it's not the most organized, but everything works just fine. We might have to add it, but it's great. It works excellent for even automating code. So pretty much whatever you have, or even emails, as you've seen, it works really great. So how do we create this? Once again, it's using the background application called auto hotkey. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to include the link down also for this, but auto hotkey is where you can get it. It's a free software. And it's autohotkey.com. I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put it directly in the template somewhere where you can see it right about here, just so you can see it and you'll have it available to you. So it's always there. You just need to click it inside this. It's free. I'm using version 2.0 in this. So make sure you download version 2.0. There was a version 1.0, but they are slowly phasing that version out. So I have created different libraries before something similar a little bit just with code, but never all this automation together. And I used version 1.0. So you'll want to make sure to download version 2.0. So once you're here, you'll see this screen first, I think this one here. So you just download version. And once you get a download, of course, it's going to download. I'm just going to go into the download and we're going to run it. And what that's going to do is going to install it on your machine. You'll see this screen. It says auto hotkey. We want it for all users. So then we're just going to install it. And so of course it's already installed for me. So it's just say it's going to close my current script, which is okay. It's fair enough if it's closed and I just want to walk you through the steps. So it's installing now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get to this screen here. And with this screen, what I want to do is I want to create a brand new script and I'm going to give it a title. So we're just going to call it test script and we want to give it a location. We kind of want to know it's generally going to be in this location, but that's okay. We want it in that and we can use empty or minimal for version two. All it does is require version 2.0. And I think that's better. It just creates almost an empty script, except the word just requires version two. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create it. So that's going to open this script. Now, what it does is it created this script. So we have here the one that I just created test script one, because I guess I had another one with that name, which is fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to then edit this script. Now I'm going to be using edit with notepad, but you can use any type of editor to edit and you can use notepad or a few other things inside this script. All you're going to see is again, is this just this empty thing. And that's pretty much all you need. You don't need anything else with this. So we can close this. The only thing that we really need is the path. 
that pathway is very important because I need to map it. And so inside, we want to then map it to our drive. So I'm gonna show you just to link it up. So once we go inside our software here, I've got a cheat sheet and this is really cool. This is gonna help you all the scripts and everything. We'll be going over a little bit of that. But so here, right in here, we wanna put the full path of that script wherever it is. So I would just put the name. So keep that in mind that every time it creates a script, we only need one script, it's always gonna end in AHK. So all you would do is just copy the folder location or the file path and place it directly in here. You can also browse for it here and locate it. So that's fine too. You can browse for it and it'll put it directly in there. So for me, I put it in my documents, auto hotkey, and I would just put it here. So I'm using this one right now, so we'll continue with this one. But whatever one you've just created, you'll select open and what it's gonna do is just gonna put it right here. One more thing that we do need is I need to know where the main program is installed. Generally, it's in your program files, auto hotkey version two. So that's the next thing we want to do. We want to know where the program is that's actually running. This is the script and this is the program that's running. So what you'll also want to do is you'll want to browse for that main program. And again, once you do that, you want to look inside. You'll see it's generally going to be in your program files. So we'll go into C and then program files and then auto hotkey here. And then we wanna look for version two. You might have multiple versions. Version two is what we want. And we want this one right here, auto hotkey EXE. So that's the one we want and click open. Okay, and then it's gonna put that path here. Mine's already there. That's it. So we've got a lot of other things that can help us with the auto hotkey script. So I kind of put a cheat sheet. So make sure you get this. There's a lot of things that we can do with it. The most important things are here when you want to automate keystrokes, when you want to use the control key or the alt key or the shift key inside your automation. Like let's say you want to do shift and then E to launch a program. You'll use this right now. Actually, what I'll do is probably for our Patreon members. What I'll do is I'll add some automation that can make it even easier. So we'll work on that. Plus your ideas. I do want to get your ideas of what to add to this. So that's it. That's all of the setup that you need to do. Of course, downloading and installing the application. It's free. And so that's it. So then what you want to do is you can add a new automation. So we click add a new and this little box here that kind of should be hidden, but it's OK. I want you to see it and then I'll hide it eventually. It just holds basically the row. If it's an existing one, it holds the row. See, it says eight. Now that should be hidden eventually, but it's okay. It's okay if you see it because I want you to understand what's going on, but it just holds data and it's easy to hide. Normally we would hide that. So we've got some options here when we create a new one. So we for sure, we wanna give it a name. So I'll give it another name. Now let's say we want to open a specific folder often enough. Maybe we open our desktop folder. So we'll just do desktop folder i want to open that and what is the automation type well it's going to be open folder that's what i want to happen and let's just give it a shortcut key so i want to do every time let's do control alt and then f for that so for the control i'm going to use this up arrow here i'm going to put that in here what i'm thinking of is to click a button and have that automatically done because that'd be easier because otherwise i got to look for it on my keyboard so then once we have that we're going to use the alt which is the exclamation and then i want to use f lowercase is okay so that's the shortcut key now what do we want to happen well i want to enter the folder path here or i can browse for it and i just want my desktop to be open so i'm just going to click here and desktop here and that's pretty much what I want to happen. I want this folder to be open. So let's just go into the AI pictures. That was a cool training. So if I want that, I'm just gonna copy this part or we can open it. So we can copy it or just browse for the folder. So since we're on the desktop, we can just click desktop and that's it. That's all we need to do is click okay. And that's gonna enter this path here. So we can also copy and paste it. That's it, that's all we need to do. Save and close it. So we just need to remember the shortcut, but that's why we have the library. And the shortcut is here, control, and then it is alt, and then it is F. So we're gonna save and close it. Now, when I type in alt, control, and then F, it's gonna launch that desktop folder, and there it is. So very, very easy that we can set up these automations, things that we do quite often, especially the expanding the text that I showed you, that is a great one. And it doesn't really matter how much text. So you see this text expansion? If I select on here or this one, let's take a look at this one right here, the mentorship question. If I have a mentorship question, sometimes there may be a lot of text. But no matter how much text there is, we can easily automatically type it. So if I type in METQ, it's gonna automatically type that. So let's take a look in that. We'll get rid of this. And I type in METQ, and it's gonna automatically, easily and quickly type it. This is not fast forwarding the video, it's actually typing by itself 
while you're watching. And of course, we can use that in an email or whatever we want. There's not much to this. So everything works quite quickly and quite easily. And so how do we actually make this? So let's share some of the details. Don't forget, if you want this application template, all you need to do is download it in the description. This is gonna be a quicker video. It's relatively easy. So the first thing what we want is we have a user form here. You see, we have a user form. We have the name, the type, and the shortcut key. So that's kind of it. So now we do have those five types and I put them over here. They're text expansion run program and it's called automation type. So I've created a named range called automation types. And we're gonna use that in the dropdown list. And I also wanna know what row is selected, right? When I select a row, I want something to happen. What do I want to happen? I wanna highlight that row. I wanna put this little edit icon. It's called edit auto button. I wanna place that here. And I've got add new. So I've only got a few things that are going on on this screen compared to some of my more comprehensive applications. However, this one is gonna save us a ton of time. So for example, I have right now my own library and it's got tons, but I can't keep track of it. If I have something like this, and maybe I'll set up a little bit of a filter here for our Patreon, it would be nice to be able to filter by automation type. So I've got a lot of ideas for the next version on Patreon. So make sure you do get signed up on Patreon, just a few dollars a month and it helps us out a great deal. All right, so let's take a deep dive into that and we're gonna go into the developers and we're gonna go into Visual Basic. Alt F11 is the shortcut that will get you there if you don't have that available. I'm just using this as some sample macros, but we really have two modules here. We've got a settings module and we've got a auto record. We'll briefly go over the settings module. Remember we had some buttons. We're gonna browse for the AHKEXE file. Remember there was, and this thing, we needed to browse for that. So all we're doing is looking for a specific file when we click this button. All we're doing here is looking for the specific AHK file. So I've got two different macros that are gonna run and they're gonna place the pathway of those individual files, this one in D3 and this one in D5. That's a great help to us. So we have two different macros that are gonna handle it. The EXE file, they're very similar. We're gonna dimension the file dialog as a file dialog, just keep it simple there. We're going to open a file. It's gonna create that file dialog. If we were looking for a folder, we would change this to folder. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna give them a title saying, browse for your auto hotkey XE file. You see that here when I select that, right? It says here, up at the top, browse for your auto hotkey EXE file. You see it's got the type here down here in the filters. It only has one and it's auto hotkey EXE. That's gonna allow the user to only look for one specific file type because that's all that we want them to add. So we've cleared any existing filters that might have been there previously and added one very specific filter, autohotkey.exe. We only want that. And then if they show equals negative one, that means they've selected something, then I wanna take the entire pathway of what they've selected, that means the selected item one, this is the entire path, and I wanna put it in the settings screen and I wanna put it in D3. So that's really easy. If we're browsing for the AHK file, remember this is the AHK file, this one's gonna go in D5. This one's almost the same, where again, we're picking a file, we want a specific file, not a folder. We're gonna give it a little bit different title called browse for your auto hotkey AHK file. This is the script that everything is on. Remember, let's just take a quick look at that script. So you can see my script and see what we've done. So we're gonna edit this script. And then, sorry, that was a little bit off the screen, but it's inside the screen. And I just wanna show you a few things at the bottom of my screen here. So this one, this is our version two. This is the auto hotkey that's running. So I'm gonna right click that. There's pretty much two things that we do. We reload the script, although that's automatic. We don't have to do that and edit the script. Once again, we don't have to do that either. We don't really have to do anything because we have this cool tool, but editing the script will open that script up and then reloading it will means reloading any changes. However, we don't need to do any of that. So that's it. So you saw my desktop there and let's just show you that again. I really like that. So basically we get this script here. This is the desktop. This is the application. Actually, I took that picture myself. So let's go back into that script and take a quick look and see exactly a little bit more information so that we understand what's going on. So let's take a look at um, this one. We're running it. So these are each individual scripts. These are things that happen when we click certain keys. I'll go into a little bit more detail of that, but basically this is what the script looks like. This is all the scripts. So previously, if you were using auto hotkey, you'd need to go in here and you'd need to kind of figure out what to put and where to put it. Now you don't have to. We don't even need to look at this now because we have our library 
everything is fully automated but it's here this is where it is so let's get back into the library and what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the vba and i want to double down on this auto hotkey form so this is the user form that allows us to edit add new and delete so we can do all that and here's that field and generally you all want that hidden but we'll keep it there so let's take a look at some of the information about these fields so we can get an idea so what i'm going to do is i'm going to launch the properties using f4 will also get us there we can familiarize ourselves with some of the names of these fields now if you're new to vba and you want to create user forms i've got videos on just that check out our vba basic where i create user forms from scratch so this one we're going to drill down just really the auto hotkey integration i really want to focus on that not necessarily creating a user form but i do want you to understand exactly some of the features of this user form so we know exactly where our data is coming from and where our data is going so this field right here is called auto row all it does is store the row number of existing let's just check it if it's an existing one notice on row eight i want it to hold row eight if it's a new one there's going to be nothing inside this field and so when we save it i know it's going to need to be saved in a new row or it's going to be updated in the existing row so keep that in mind so that's what that's for so back inside this user form we also have the automation name it's called script name and in the next field i've got the automation type oh, it's called auto type that's the name of it and of course the source where's the data coming from so if we want to look for the data we look for something called row source we see here row source that is that named range that i showed you recently we'll take another quick look at that to refresh and it's all the way over here in column aa and we see that if we select or highlight those particular cells we see the named range called automation types so that is where that drop down list the combo box gets its information from directly from the row source called automation types next up we have a shortcut key this is called shortcut obviously and also this is just some text fields here so we don't need that much and i've got a few different boxes here i've got actually three i've got a button here this is a button i've got a text box here and a larger text box here now the reason that these are overlapping is because they don't all show at the same time either i'm going to show this large text box or i'm going to show this single line text box and the button so they're here you can see them but when it's run you're going to only see one at a time if the text expansion is selected you're going to see this large box if any other option is selected including the run program open url open file or open folder this larger text box it's called text expansion will be hidden and this one called path field and the button called browse button will be displayed not always displayed i think it's only displayed when we're selecting the folder a program but not the url the url you just copy and paste it in there so keep that in mind that i've got some different fields here that only show up based on the automation type selected so that's it then i've got a four buttons this one's called save button add new button cancel button and delete automation so when the cancel button all we need to do is just close the form so when i select cancel button all i do is close the form so we want to drill a little bit down into some of the actions that this when we launch this form this form is launched in two different ways it's launched when we select this button called add new automation and it's also launched when we edit an existing automation so there's two different macros to launch this form let's go into the first one add new automation so when i right click this button and i go into the assigned macro not the group but the individual shape in other words i've selected the individual shape not the group as a whole we see that we have automation open if i click edit it's going to take me directly into the auto record macros and we see something called automation open so that's the macro that's running it the first thing is i want to clear out remember we have the row i want to clear that out i don't want to show any row why don't i want to show any row because it's a brand new automation i want to make sure this field here is clear that way when we save it we know we must assign a brand new row so it's going to have to go in row 14 if we add a new one so we want to make sure that that's clear and then i want to show the form relatively easy great but what about when i want to edit an existing one we're going to actually load it so if i select on an individual item inside this group and i right click it and i click assign macro we're going to see a different macro this time this one's called automation load because we're loading an existing automation so we need some things to happen and i'm going to click edit and it's going to take us directly inside our auto record macros to a macro called 
automation load. So the first thing what I need to do is I need to know that selected row. It's very important. So when I make a selection, look at that, it's changing. Well, we're going to use conditional formatting to highlight it. And we're going to also take the row selected using the selection change event inside VBA. And we're going to place it directly inside AB2. So AB2 value will change. So if I select row six here, and we take a look at AB2, we see that it's been sent to six. So if we know that selected row is in AB2, we can then display that selected row using a conditional formatting. So if I go into the home and conditional formatting, and then I manage those rules, we're going to see three different rules. The first of which, the most priority, means that AB2, there's a formula. That formula, AB2, that's that cell that you saw the row in, equals the row. When that happens, what I want to do is I want to highlight that specific row. I want to give it this darker blue background. So if we see, we're going to use a fill effects of a little bit lighter blue and then a little bit darker blue from light to dark. And also we're going to give it a font. That font's going to be bold and it's going to be set to white. So that's what's going to happen. And that's how we can distinguish that selected row. And then the other two, simply we're going to color the odd rows with this formula. We're going to color the even rows with this formula. So that's going to be the alternating rows. And the two conditions, we want to make sure that column A has a value. And in this case, that it is an odd row. On the blue ones, it's going to be the even row. So we're going to use these formulas and we're going to apply each one of those three conditional formats to the same fields here and the applies to which is A5 through E and then a large number, which is sufficient. Very good. So now that we see that, we have some action that's going to be happening. When I make a selection, we see that we have this little display and then we get the row. So how does that happen? Well, it happens on the selection change. So while I'm going to be going over the automation load, let's figure out exactly how we populate AB2 with that row. So how does that happen? It happens on the selection change event. So I'm going to go into the library sheet here. That's this sheet right here, library. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the code behind that sheet. And I want to focus on a worksheet. And I want to focus on a selection change, meaning when the user makes a selection change, we want something to happen. And so if they select a large number of cells, we don't want anything to happen. That's good because if I select a large, I want it to exit the sub. I don't want anything to happen. So that's why we have the if target count large one. And you'll see me, right? All I need to do is just type in that. And that's because of auto hotkey. So I use it extensively. And now you can too with this incredible library. So the first thing what we want to do is if shapes edit auto button. If that edit auto button is visible, I want to hide it. And that means notice this button. If I select any cell, it's going to be hidden. However, if I select the right cells, I want it displayed again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if that shape is visible. If it is, then I'm going to hide it using this command here. Now, when the user makes a selection within A5 through E99 in a large row, we want something to happen. But not every row, only those rows with there's a value in column A. So I'm going to check A. If there's a value, only then do I want something to happen. So that's our next argument. So our first argument is going to be if the user made a selection within this range. Our second argument, note if we parse it with and, a in the target row does not equal empty. When those two conditions are met, then we want a few things to happen. That row that the user has selected is going to go directly into AB2. This is what triggers the conditional formatting. Next up, we also want to show that shape that allows us to edit those automations called edit auto button. I want to give it that left position of F and the target row. So it's going to go in column F and the target row. I also want to give it the top position of F and the target row. And then I want to make sure that it is displayed using the property visible equals two. This will display it. So this positions the left, this positions the top, and this displays it. So that's all we need to do. Now there's a macro that's tied to this. And it's that macro, as I had mentioned, that is going to actually load our information. So now that we understand how AB2 gets populated, we can go back into this here. If it's empty, AB2, we're going to exit the sub. And the auto row, we're going to set that. That's a long variable, whole number variable. Whatever's in AB2 is going to go into this variable. Now we're going to focus on our auto hotkey form. That's that user form. Remember the auto row value, that field that's going to be generally hidden, is going to take on the row. This is our automation library row. 
Now, what I may do for Patreon is I don't necessarily like, this is great for our purposes for training, but I really like our original data on another sheet hidden from the user. So I'll probably do that. I don't generally like the data. So usually you hide the data, but this is more great for training because you can see it right here. So uh, for Patreon, I'll put this on another sheet, a hidden sheet so that we can sort and filter this and do a lot of things with the data. So keep that in mind. Great. So first of all, we put that row inside this field. We're going to take whatever's in column B, that script name. We're going to put it inside the script name field. The automation type coming from column C is going to go directly inside that field, the auto type. The shortcut value is going to come from column D. And now what we want to do is I want to show or hide some of those fields. If we remember correctly, we have a few fields here. Take a look at this field, path field and our browse button. And we have our text expansion. So remember, we're going to display or hide those based on whatever the automation type is. So if the automation type equals text expansion, then what I want to do is I want to put this information here, the results, what's in column E, directly inside our text expansion field. Otherwise, if it's a path, whatever's in E is going to go into the path field. So whatever's going to populate that, and I'll show you what I mean. So this is an open URL. So if I edit it, you see that our URL field is going to be populated. Great. But then for our text expansion, we see that we have that larger field populated and everything else is hidden. So it's kind of handy. So that means it's coming from the same column here, but it's going into different fields based on whatever type. If it's a URL or if it's an open folder, it's going to go into this smaller field. So we need to base that on the type. Very good. So now we've seen that. And then the last thing is we're just going to show the form. Now, when we show the form, there's some things that happen. So when we show the form, there's an event. So if I go in here and I click view code, every time we open a form, there's a specific event that runs and there may be some code inside that event. And we can reach that event. We're going to go down here to user form. And we want a very specific event called initialize. And that means every time the form is visible, it opens up, some code might run. So here's the event. If you have any code inside here, it's going to run as soon as our user form is displayed or actually right before it. So first of all, here's some code that's going to run. I want to set some defaults that will help us. If ME auto row equals empty, so that means only if it's a brand new automation because auto row is empty, then what we we'll want to do is I want to set the default as text expansion. I want to make sure that the text expansion field is visible, saying visible equals true. The browse button should be hidden. The path field should also be hidden. And I want to set the result caption to result or action. I forgot to show this part to you. So this field right here is called result label button. And that can change based on that. So let's just take a look at that. Add new. If I were to change this to run URL, see now that it says exe path. Now, if I change it, it says paste URL. Or if I change it again, it says file path. So this is the same label, but the caption actually changes within it. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're setting the caption to result option. Now you saw all of those things happen. That's pretty cool. When did those things happen? You see our auto type here. When we made a change, here's the change event. When we made a change to the auto type, something happened. So here's all the code that we have because those fields change based on whatever the auto type is. So when the auto type changes, we need to do some things and we can use the select case because there's different things that we want to do for each individual automation. And to do that, we're going to use the select case auto type value. We could assign a variable, but it's okay. So if the case is text expansion, here's what I want to do. The text expansion, that field, I want that visible. And I, the browse button I want hidden, the path I want hidden, and that label, remember the caption, I said we're going to change the caption of that label to result action. So you saw that happen when we change it from open file to text expansion, you see all that happened. Well, that all happens on the event when this is changed. So that's exactly the code that we're going over now. If it's run program, we're running a program, we want to hide the text expansion. All we're doing is running a program, so we don't need a lot of space for text. So we can hide that larger field. Since we're running a program, we want the user to be able to browse for the exe file of that application. So the browse button is going to be very helpful. We want to display that. We also want to display the path field because that's where we're going to put the exe file once they browse for it. So we want that visible. The browse button caption, now there's a caption on that button. 
I forgot to show you that too. <laughs> so here is run program. We see browse for exe file. So that's a button. Here, we're going to look on open file. Now the button's named browse for file. So now it's open folder. So we see how the button text changes based on whatever I've selected. You know, I add features so much that I kind of forget what I've added. And then I get to recording. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I just added that. So we can learn together. So the text on this button will change the instructions for the user. It's still the same button. I'm not changing the button. I'm just changing the caption inside the button. And I have a single macro that will do all of that. And I'll show you that with you. So the macro itself can do all of that based on whatever the automation type is. It can open a file, it can open a folder, or it can browse for a specific program all of that. So we see how we have that inside the code. The caption of the button will change running a program. So we see each one paste URL here. So this is the result, the caption. And so based on each one, we're either going to show or hide the text expansion, show or hide the browse button. Could you kind of get the idea for this? So it's using select case. So it's relatively easy once we have all the labels correct. Very good. So when we browse for file or folder, we can do that. Let's take a look at that because that's the browse button. Remember, we have a browse button that I just showed you. And I said it's got many purposes. So what we want to do is we want to go into the definition and that's going to take us right here called browse for file or folder. Once again, we're going to determine what is that auto type. It's based on the value of that field. So based on that, now we can do some things. We're going to use select case once again. If the case is run program or open file, so it could be either open file or it's run program. I want to set the file dialog to an application file dialog file picker, right? File picker because we're either opening a file or running a program. Not really running, we're opening a program that's going to be run. So we don't run the program unless the shortcut key is actually clicked, but we want to look for the program or browse for the program. So that's what we want to do. So the case is run program. We're going to use a file picker. But what if it's an open folder? In that case, I want to use a folder picker. So it should be file picker or folder picker here. So we actually want to look at the folder picture. So this file dialog will change. Either it's going to look for a file or it's going to look for a folder here. Next up, in the file dialog now we're going to set the title is going to be auto type now this is kind of cool so when we add a new one and let's say we are going to run a program so we browse for the file and we take a look at the title it says run program here at the top so you run program next to the excel however if i were to change this to let's say open file and we say browse for file we now it says open file so i'm changing the title and the title is exactly the same as it is for the automation type or open folder. So we set that title dynamically based on whatever the automation type is. And we do that here. So the title is simply the auto type. We're gonna clear any filters. Now I wanna add a filter, but if it's a run program, then what I wanna do is I wanna add a filter, I wanna say select program for the instructions and exe. But if it's an open file, then I wanna select a file, any file type. And then we're going to exit the sub. So let's take a quick look at that just so we can see that in action. Let's close this out here. And so open folder, that's pretty good. So browse for file. We see we're just opening for the folder. There's no filters on that. If we run a program and we click browse for file, we take a look down here. We say select exe. So we, we're looking for a very specific exe. The filter is set. However, if we are going to open a specific file and we browse for file, we're going to see the select file could be any type of file we want. So the filter is dynamic based on what we have selected. So it's very easy. We can use a single macro for all that. Next up, all we're going to do is take the path of whatever they selected. It could be the run program. It could be a very specific file or it could be a folder. I'm going to take that and we're putting it inside our auto hotkey form. We're putting it in that path value. So I'm basically taking it and I'm putting it directly inside this field called path field. So this button is dynamic, this field. So that's what happens. So we create a dynamic browse button that's gonna help us automate a lot of the work that we're doing. Very good. So we see when we edit, we can populate that. But now how do we actually save something to our script, right? Because it gets saved to our script. I want to show you that one more time. So we'll just do something because we're going to be working with this. I'm going to test name and I want to enter uh, hi. Fred. So shortcut, we'll just do hi F. And uh, this is going to be called hi Fred. 
Fred's got to make his appearance here. So hi, Fred Fredders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save and close that. Now I want to show you how this makes it into the script. If we reload our script, I'm going to reload it. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the script here. And we see that we have here our shortcut is colon colon HIF. Then we have the opening parentheses. We have the text that we're going to be entered and we have the end parentheses. So that's what I want our program to add to that. If, again, if we change that, thank you for the lovely flowers. I want you to see how it updates. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the code, so save and close. So if I save and close that, oh, I do have to reload the script, so it'll reload itself. Let's go ahead, it'll ask me, it's saying the file has been modified. Do you wanna reload it? Certainly we do. So we see how it's automatically updated. It's not added new. So how do we do that? Well, of course, that happens on our save and close. So that means when I click here, this button, save and close, we're gonna run something called automation save update. So if I go into the auto record macros and I go up here, this one right here, this long one here, that's the one automation save update that I'm going to share with you. Before we can actually do any saving to the library or updating the script, we need to make sure that the user has actually entered the correct information and make sure that they didn't leave anything blank. So that's what we need to check. If for some reason the script name equals empty, we need to let the user know and we're gonna exit the sub. We're gonna do the same for the automation type, the shortcut, those are all required. We're also gonna use if the automation type is text expansion, but the text expansion value is empty, meaning they want to add in a text expansion, but they didn't enter any text to expand, then we need to let the user know to please enter text expansion text. Likewise, if the auto type value is not text expansion, but the path field is empty, then we also need to let the user know to please enter a correct path or URL to save the automation. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign some variables. Now, inside this, we need to make sure that we have these variables. So that exe file that's going to run, we've given that a name called auto hotkey exe path. Now, that's the named range that I've given it. I also wanted to assign it a variable inside VB. I just want to make sure that the name range and the variable aren't the same and should be slightly different. And I've done the same for the ahk path. That path is also given a name range called auto hotkey ahk path once again i also want to give that a variable and i want to make sure that we have an accurate and correct exe path and i want to make sure that we have an accurate and correct ahk file so to do that we're going to then first assign them the variables so here's the variable called ahk exe path notice it's different than this i want them different if i want to refer inside vba to a named range i can just use the brackets so it's a lot quicker and we're going to put that value into this variable it's a string variable and also the same thing for with our ahk path we're going to put that into its own string variable i also want to get the script name we're going to put that into a string variable the automation type into another string variable the shortcut that will be in a string variable and i want to do once again i want to get the results now the result is going to either come from the text expansion or it's going to come from the path so if the automation types is text expansion i want that result to come directly from our text expansion value just to reiterate just so i don't lose you here i want to make sure that if it's text expansion i'm pulling the information from this field However, if it's run program or anything else, I'm pulling it from the path field. So we're extracting at, and both of those are gonna go into a variable called results. So regardless if it's coming from the path or regardless if it's coming from the text expansion, it's going into the same variable called result. It's either this or this, but result. Now what I wanna do is I wanna check for the proper shortcut syntax. There's a few things that we need to make sure of. If for some reason I decide to add a new automation, uh, let's just say I wanna run a program. To run a program, I I need to use one of these control alt shift windows key or a combination of multiple and a letter so what i want to do is i just want to make sure it's not something like this so if i try to add this and i save and close it it's going to let me know it said please make sure to use at least one shortcut key the up arrow exclamation the plus or the pound in combination with a single letter for a properly formatted shortcut key so i need to add one of these symbols and one letter for the shortcut key so it's going to let me know in that message box and that's exactly what we have here one of those message box here please make sure to add at least one shortcut key and a letter for those double spaces here for a properly formatted shortcut key and we're going to exit the sub out very good next up what i want to do is i want to make sure that these variables that we've grabbed from here and here 
I want to make sure that those are not empty. So the AHK path or the AHK script path, if either one of them are empty, we need to let the user know to please enter both an auto hotkey application path and an auto hotkey script path and the settings screen. So we're just going to simply go to the settings screen and activate that and we're going to exit out of the sub. I want to make sure that the exe path is correct. So we need to make sure that it's proper. If the directory of the exe path vb directory equals empty, that means it's an incorrect path. We need to let the user know, activate the settings screen and exit the sub. Also, I want to check once again for the AHK path, making sure that it is also correct. If it's not letting the user know, activating the screen and exiting the sub. Now we've run all of our checks. What I want to do now is I want to build a string. I want to put them together. So basically, as you saw in our script here, you see this is an entire string. So I want to build all that together. So I want to take our shortcut. I want to take our text expansion and I want to put it in a format that auto hotkey version number two wants. Remember, it's different than version number one. So it basically, it's going to be the double colons for the text expansion, then the double colons, then the parentheses in a new line, then whatever they want in a new line, and then the close parentheses. However, if it is anything else, I'm going to use the shortcut keys where here's the shortcut here plus the double quotes, plus the run, if it's a file path, a folder, or URL, or whatever it is, then the parentheses, then the quotation marks, then the path, and then the end quotes, and the end parentheses. So that's kind of the format that we need to set to make sure. So we see even for the longer ones, we're ending with parentheses, and we're starting with these double colons. So we need to build that string up so that we can add it or update it. So to do that, we're going to build the new script string, but it's different. Remember, if it's a text expansion, it's slightly different than a file folder URL or program. So we need to use an if else and if for that. So if the automation type is text expansion, then what I would like to do is our new AHK script is equal to the double colons, as I showed you, the shortcut key, the double colons. Then what I want is a new line. Character 10 represents a new line, as I mentioned. So new line, we can use VBCRLF or we can use VB new line. There's a few others we could probably use, but I'm just using this character 10. It works just fine. Then I want the open parentheses here. Then I want new line. This is a new line. Character 34 is the quotation marks. So then I'll just show you again, just so we can kind of keep an eye on it here. And so we can kind of look at both here because it gets kind of crazy. Remember the double colon, the shortcut key, the double colon, a brand new line, open parentheses, then our text, then the close. So that's kind of the format. So the shortcut, double colon, new line, parentheses, new line, the result, meaning whatever we want the result to be, then a brand new line, then the close parentheses. So that's what we have. So that's going to build our script for the new expansion. Also, there's one other thing. If I create a subroutine, so let's say I do have a subroutine right in here. I want to look in the library. I do have for VBA, we have a subroutine called BFF. So when I put that in our test file, I just want to show you something real quick. And I'm going to go into module one. I'm just going to clear what's ever here. You can see that. But what I want you to see is something that's in VBA. So BFF. And as soon as I enter sub n sub automatically, meaning if I were to type in sub test, you see n sub gets automated, right? So whenever we type in sub n sub, so that means if our automation also includes n sub, it's going to be two n subs. So let's just take a look at the script. If we take a look inside this script right here, the subroutine script right here, look, it's, there's a beginning sub here. Then we have our code, but look, there's no n sub. The reason is, is because as soon as this types in a VBA, n sub is going to be automated. So I want to basically remove the n sub. I want to get rid of it because it's automated in VBA. So look at this script. There's no n sub here, except again, once again, let me show you here. As soon as I type it in, it gets automated. So it's VBA that automates. So we don't want two. That's why we have to remove it. So there's some specific text that's in our code that's going to say replace. If there's an n sub that's found, replace it with nothing. And we're going to use the replace command because it's automated by VBA. So we don't want to. So here's I've got some text replace n sub if it exists. VBA code automatically adds n sub when sub is typed in, as you saw. So we got to do that. And what if it's a program, a file, or folder? So in that case, there's some things that we need to do. Let's take a look at this. We need the shortcut. We need the double colons. We need the word run. We need the open parentheses. We need the open quotation marks. Then whatever the file path is, then the quotation marks, then the close parentheses. 
So that's exactly what we're going to do. So the new AHK script is going to equal the shortcut, the double quotes, plus the run, plus the parentheses, plus the quotation marks. Here's our quotation mark here, character 34, and the result, plus another quotation mark here, and the close parentheses. So that's going to build the new script. So for URL file program. Great. So we have the URL script. Now, why don't we just add that in? Well, I can't add it in right away because I don't want to get two. So in here, you see there's two instances in our script because I was kind of monkeying around with it. But what we don't want is I don't want two instances of it like it is here. I only want one instance. I did fix the issue that caused that though. I only want one single instance. So I'm going to look for it. If it's found, I'm just going to clear it out so we can add it again to make sure that it doesn't duplicate again. So what I want to make sure of, actually, I can keep one in there. So what I want to do is I want to look for it there if it's existing or not. So what I need to know is if it's a brand Brand new automation then I know it doesn't exist in our script it's very easy I just need to go to the bottom and I need to add the script right here but if it's an existing automation I need to look for it what I need to look for I need to look for the one that's been saved and I need to replace it with the new one remember we made a change on this one we looked for the old one and we replaced it so if it says lovely flowers right inside the script I need to replace it so we're going to determine that if it's an existing automation, how do we know? The auto row value does not equal empty. That means, once again, taking a quick look, selecting on the new automation, we see that this is empty. However, if we select an existing one, we see that there's an eight in there, so it's not empty. That's how we can determine whether it is a new or an existing. So this means it's an existing automation. That means I have to look for the old script and I have to replace it with the new script. So that's very important. So we're gonna put the automation row, whatever it is, so we know the automation row. Why do I need to know that? Because I need to get the old script. The old script is here and here. So I need to get that information. So we need to build up that old script. So the old type, we're gonna get the old type. That's gonna be in column C. I need to know the old type. Is it a text expansion? Is it a URL? And again, we're gonna build the old script just like we did the new script. If it's a text expansion, we're going to do exactly the same thing with the old one, but this time the data is coming from column D and column E. So that means column D, the shortcut, column E in the result. So we're building up that old one, just like we did the new one. And also, once again, if that old one includes N sub, then I want it removed. But remember, I don't necessarily want it removed from here. I would just want it removed from, let's take a look and automation. Oops, I removed it from the library. So this one is what I wanted to click. I want to make sure that the N sub stays here because this is nice, but I don't want it in the results. So the old one, we need to build that script also removing it into this string variable. So the reason we're building the old one is I want to look. If they're different, I need to take the new one and replace it, the old one. So that's very important. However, if it's a URL, a file URL, a folder, I also want to, again, get an old script. So we have the new script and we have the old script. The old script is simply based on what's column in D and E, and we're building it up. So now that we have the new one and the old one, I want to simply check to see if they're exactly the same. If the new script is exactly old script, then that means there's no changes. And that means that I've selected here, I've edited it, I didn't change anything, and I save and close. There's no change. So it's very easy. There's nothing to update on the script, and so we don't need to do anything. However, what if we do make changes? If the new script is slightly different than the old one, then I want to do something. I was just debugging and printing it, but that's not necessary here. So now if it's a new automation, then we're going to save it to the library and we're going to go down. So if it is a new script, we're going to go to no changes and I'm going to skip all the way down here. No changes. So there's nothing to update on the script because there's no changes. So there's no need to make an update because the new is exactly the same as the old. Again, I'm editing it. I'm not making any changes. I'm saving and closing it. Nothing to do. Simple. So we're simply going to go down here and we're going to hide the form. However, if there are update changes, we need to do something else. All of this is for an existing automation. But what about if it's a new automation? Else, it's a new automation. In that case, I need to find a new row and I want to save that information. Now, I included an ID for auto. It's not necessary, but it just kind of keeps things nice and unique and organized. So I, I did add an ID, although in this training, it's not necessary, but it's always a good idea to have a unique ID. So I did that. So the first thing is I want to find that first available row in column A. So it's going to use the end XLF plus one. That's that first available. If the automation row is five, meaning that's the first one, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the first automation to one because the first available is one. However, if the first available row is not five, I'm going to take the row above. Here's the row above that value, whatever the value is, and I'm going to add one to that. And that's going to be the value. So basically, if I add a new one, I'm going to look to the row above. I see that it's 10. So the next one's going to be 11. So that's another way to simply keep adding and have unique IDs that are incremented by one. Great. So now all we're going to do is I'm going to take that new row that we just set and I'm going to put that inside that field in our user form. And that's important because if I save it again, I need to make sure that it knows exactly the row that it's been saved to. Everything else is going to be either for both new and existing automations. In column B, we need to save the script name. In column C, the type. In column D, the shortcut. In E, the result. And then I want to uh, wrap the text equals false. And that's important because I don't want the text you know, to do like this. I don't want it to be like this, right? So because if wrap text equals true, it would look something like this. And I don't really want that. So when we do false in VBA, it's simply doing something like this. So we just do false and it automatically updates the row height, it's like a double click on here. And that's exactly what I want so that everything's nice and clean. And so that's all we need to do there. So the rest of the code is basically updating the script. So we have that script path, that AHK path here. So I need to open it and we're going to open it as input one. So basically what I need to do is I need to take all of the text, which is here, all of the text inside the script and put it inside a string variable. That string variable is going to call the script content. Once I have all the information inside a variable, I don't need to keep this script open so I can close it. So simply we're closing number one. So this opens the script, copies all of its contents into this string variable and closes it. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that there's one other thing that's very important. When I automate things using VBA, I need to save it. There's an important thing and I need to close the app. I can't keep that script open. I need to automatically close it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a special key code inside our script. If we take a look inside, I'm going to open that script again here. And what I'm looking for is this. I need to make sure that this is in the script. You see this here? Actually, this is just like a memo. You know, this is not important, but this is important. What this is going to be does is going to give us a shortcut key that's automatically going to close this script. So if we take a look at this, we see that we have the control and we have the exclamation point X. So this particular shortcut is going to exit this application. It's going to close it. And that's exactly what we want. We want it closed and then we reload it. So when we close it and we reload it, it automatically refreshes. The only way to close it properly is with a shortcut. That means this script must contain this shortcut. So I'm going to look in this. In other words, when you get this script and you create it, it's only going to have this row. It's going to have nothing else. But I also want to make sure it has this. So I'm going to look in that script. If it doesn't contain this, I'm going to add it because the only way to close the script is to add this shortcut key inside it. So it closes the script. So we need to be able to define the hotkey control alt X to exit the script. Exiting the script is very important. After we add data to the script, we need to save the script. We need to close the script and then we need to reload it. So it's kind of a three point process. And how can we close it? We close it with a shortcut key. We can use Excel send keys to automatically close it using some VBA so we can do that. So we have VBA type this out automatically and then it closes the script. So it's very cool. But if your script doesn't have this, I need to check to make sure that it does. Very important. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to look inside the script content. I'm going to use the in string command to look for that. And I'm looking for this right here. Exit app. If it's not found equals zero, then I'm going to add it to the script. So the script content, whatever's there already, and a brand new row, we're going to add this and it adds it automatically. So that's very, very cool. So it adds this because it needs to use it. Continuing on, that's just the necessary part. Not only needs to be done once. Now what I want to do is I want to perform the find and replace. I want to look for that old script. If it's found, I want to replace it with a new script. So that's pretty much it. So here what we're going to do, if in string the script contents, we're looking for that old script. If it's greater than zero, and I want to make sure that the old script doesn't equal empty just in case. Then we found it. So we're going to replace it. It's very easy with the replace command. I'm going to use the replace command and I'm going to look inside all of our script contents. I'm looking for the old script and I'm replacing it with the new script. So replace the old with the new. 
else what if it's not found then the old script wasn't found it could be a brand new script all we need to do is add that script at the bottom so we just keep adding it at the bottom the script contents equals whatever's there already plus a brand new line so here we're using vbclf for the new line and then we're going to enter that new script so that basically takes this script and it kind of builds out that string that large string of all the script and that's great so now we have that string variable that's been updated but the script isn't updated all we did was update this variable now we actually have to update the actual file so we need to open it once again remember we opened it already here just to read what was in it now we need to open it again and replace it so we're going to open here once again and we're going to take all of that new and we're basically going to replace everything in there replace the script with the, all the new contents and then we're going to close it again now remember i told you that once we put it in there we need to be able to close it so this will save and close the script but we need to actually close the entire script so and this helps us so that we don't get a notification here is the send keys now remember you notice that their percent you see that it says the x and the hot key but there's a little bit of a difference we see that here the up arrow the exclamation the x is the auto hot key equivalent of the percentage x in vba so there's a slight difference so it works great so this send keys will actually close the file i said it's very important we added it up here just in case we wanted to make sure your script included it all the way up here right up here so oops i missed it up here right here so we're checking to make sure that it exists and now what we're doing is we're executing it now we're going to wait just for one second to make sure that it is closed we're waiting just one second and now what we're going to reload the script remember reloading is very important i showed you that right click on that file and the reload option but we need to do that and how do we do that all we need to do is run the main application where is that main application it's right here exe so we that's why it's important to rerun if i run that main application it'll reload the script so that all the new changes that we made will automatically load up and so we do that right here we use the shell here and we use the path and we use the quotation marks here and again the path and a quotation mark this is going to reload the script so it automatically reloads the script once we do that all the changes will take into effect and we unload the form we clear the form out and that's it great so we see how that can work super handily we don't need sheet one here so adding a new automation updating automation very very cool let's run another program and see how that works so let's just take a look at run program and then we have a shortcut key we can assign a brand new shortcut key we can use anything we want so we can use the uh, alt and the control here so the control is going to be that up arrow and the alt is going to be the exclamation and of course we can use let's say l for that i'll use something a more clear m for that so again we're going to set the control here is going to be control alt and m and we want to run a program and i'm going to browse for the exe part of the program and so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the programs that we have and i can even use desktop so let's say i want the opera browser i can use the shortcut here so i'm going to click ok so notice that even the shortcut works so let's change this to o since it's an opera browser and i'm going to save and close that and now what we're going to do is we see that we have it down here run program here opera browser here and we've got the shortcut so let's go ahead and do that Control shift o and it's going to launch my browser very very cool so you see that it's launched the browser already so that's my new favorite browser all right i've gone over almost everything the only other thing is deleting automation when i delete an automation we want to give the user the option to get out it, everything else is almost the same as we have we're going to build that old script very important we're going to go through all the same things to build that old script i'm going to open up that script file opening it up i'm going to read the script contents the only difference in this is what i want to do is use the replaced and i'm going to look inside the script content i'm going to look for the old script and i'm simply going to replace it with nothing so here's where we clear out the script and then all we need to do is we update the script contents and then we save it and we close it and then we wait a second and then we reload the script and then of course we are going to delete that row from our library just in case once again on the updated patreon i'm going to be adding this probably putting this database on another sheet but i want to do a lot more for patreon so please let me know what your ideas make sure you get your ideas in quick because just a week from this launch actually less than a week uh, six days uh, we launch on tuesday and by monday i have put this out so i try to record on saturday 
So your ideas and your feedback, make sure you get them in quick. I'll try to put whatever features I can, as much as I can into this. So make sure you are on Patreon. That helps us out a lot. Also YouTube memberships, uh, silver is exactly the same as Patreon silver. So I do appreciate your continued support. If you want to grab my 350 template pack, that is the most amazing Excel template pack that was ever built. And of course, you can modify, customize, secure, and resell those templates for passive income on websites like Etsy. So that's a great way to get yourself some passive income using my templates. And I do love to see them out in the open. And of course, make sure you want to change them, make them your own, customize them. So much you can do with those. All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on the notification icon bell, like this video, and comment below. Let me know your ideas, what you think. Let me know you stayed until the end and watched the entire video. I always appreciate that. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.